Hello everyone, my name is Michael and today we're going to take a look at some ransomware. Now today's sample is a ransomware that was originally written in Python and then um, there are some programs you can use to actually convert a Python script and compile it into an executable. Um, that way the, uh, in this case, the victim doesn't have to have Python installed. So let's take a look at this in Detected Easy. And we'll see here it says that the compiler might have been like MingGW and it does find a zlib archive which does make sense in how the pi to exe process works it kind of compiles the scripts with a python interpreter um, and then all the libraries and everything get packed together so we'll see the entropy is pr pretty close to eight so it is packed which does make sense for how that works so let's take a look at this just in a text editor and i'm going to go to the bottom of the file and you could also use like strings from another uh, analysis program, but uh, we can see there's a reference to Python 27.dll, so it's usually or it's probably using Python 2.7. We see a lot of PyD files. Um, that's a uh, like a compiled Python. Uh, we have a lot of class names here for encodings. We have Python, Py, Py, lots of Py and Python stuff. So this is likely something to do with Python. So I'm going to use a couple of scripts here. One is called pyinstextractor. And we're going to go ahead and open up a command line. Now on this system, I've already got Python. Um, and I have it already in the environment variables. So I can just execute Python. So we'll go ahead and run pyinstextractor with our sample. And I'm actually going to pipe the output of this because it uh, spits out quite a bit that we might miss something. It actually overflows the uh, the buffer of the command line, so you can't read the whole thing. So, all right, so we'll see here. It confirms that this executable was created with Py installer version 2.1 plus, Python version 2.7, and it found a C archive, which is using that zlib signature that we saw. And there's a bunch of PYZ archives. Um, so we'll notice there's 51 files there, 350 some files there. Now we'll see in this case, um, there was a failure to decompress this, uh, pretty much all these files. And it says probably encrypted. So there's an extra layer that we're going to have to get through here. Successfully extracted the archive. Now you can use a decompiler on the PYC file. So here's that folder that it uh, extracted for us. Already we can see some assets here. So we have a lock icon, a lock bitmap, uh, Bitcoin logo. All right. So there's some, just some boilerplate DLLs and such. We can look at the Pi extracted here. So here's what it extracted, and here's those encrypted PYC files. So if for example, if we took a look in the hex editor, this is very clearly encrypted. So, one trick you can use with this is actually, it is symmetric encryption. And there's a kind of a easy way of, of decrypting this. There's uh, this crypto key file. Um, this is like a mod for the Pi installer. And we'll see there's like a build path and crypto key. Now, what I've found, actually, it's easier to see this in a text editor. From experience, there you can actually decompile this if you change the magic of the file and use a decompiler, and you can turn this back into Python source. But just from experience, pretty much this string right here, followed by an N, is the key, um, excluding the, the N. I don't quite remember what the what the N is there for, but... This is actually our key to decrypt these compiled files, or decompiled files. So, let's go back to our command line here. We're going to use Python, we're going to use pydecrypt, and let's just see what the arguments of it is. So it's going to accept a directory, which is going to be our extracted folder, and then our key. And there it goes, decrypting all those files, and now you'll see that they're is a PYC for each one of these. And we can take a look in a text editor and that looks more like code, but there's still a lot of uh, kind of garbage bytes and such, but it's, it's looking more readable now. 
So now we can actually use with these PYC, these are compiled Python files, we can use a decompiler. So I'm going to use easy Python decom decompiler, decompile a folder. I'm going to get back to the desktop here. We're going to select our PYZ extracted folder and let it go. Now this does take quite a while. Uh, I think it took like five minutes in my case. So I have another copy of it here that I already uh, have extracted. So now we can see in addition to our encrypted version, we have a compiled version and we have a decompiled version. So let's go ahead and we can take a look at this in the text editor. And we'll see, there we go. This looks like Python code. So let's go ahead and figure out what this ransomware is doing. Now, most of these files are pretty much going to be, uh, as you can see, like libraries. Uh, we have XML stuff. We have this WX, which I think is like a, a GUI library. Uh, we have some boilerplate code. We have further up, we have some crypto and codings. Um, so I can kind of give us a hint as to what this uh, what this malware may use at least. But what we're interested in is the execution point so that we can start. Now, honestly, this is a bit tricky. Um, I haven't found a surefire way to figure out which of these files is actually the starting point. If anyone has any tips on that, please do comment. Um, it's kind of trial and error in some cases. Um, sometimes if it wasn't encrypted, I know that uh, our Pi inst extractor will sometimes tell you a likely starting point, but since it was encrypted, it couldn't figure it out on its own. Um, but in this case, uh, pretty much I would just like grab a bunch of these that look like they're, they maybe aren't libraries or maybe it's a library I haven't heard of, and then I'll look at it in a text editor. But in this case, we actually do have a main file and in this case, there is a manifest that matches it, so maybe that's a hint as well. But um, in my experience, it doesn't always match up that way, like I said. If anyone has any suggestions, please do put them in the comments. But we'll take a look at this main. That does sound important. And let's go ahead and change to Python. And we'll see that this is actually an open source ransomware. Um, I'll leave it to reader's discretion to look it up. But we have a main cryptor class here. We can kind of see it uh, creates a file for the encrypted files list. Uh, we load a configuration file somewhere, delete shadow copies, add to startup, clean up and delete stuff, start a GUI. Okay, that's interesting. Get encrypted. All right, so we have a decrypt function, and we're going to care more about the encrypt files. So looks like we have our file list that was that's provided here from something else. Uh, it looks like we use some type of a crypt class to encrypt file using the configs encrypted extension. So we're looking for a crypt class. Now we could take a look into our extracted files here. Let's look for crypt, and yep, there is a decompiled crypt class here. Let's go ahead and open that up, change it to Python. And all right, so we have a lambda here, which is a function for padding. Now, this is actually PCKCS7 padding um, just by looking at the uh, algorithm it uses. So it's going to use a block cipher with that type of padding. Uh, you kind of have to manually do this in Python, so that's why that's here. Um, looks like we initialize some symmetric keys. And in this case, here's a generate key function. So this is going to be our key gen, likely. So uh, this is just a way of, in one line, choosing 32 random characters from this char set. So this is hex, 32 hex characters. Uh, so if we wanted to see what that looks like, let's go ahead and open up Python. And I'll need to do an import 
just like they do here. And then we can come down here and we'll see they're using random.choice. Paste that. Oh, I have my import wrong. I grabbed the wrong random. Okay, let's try that. So, all right, so we can kind of take a look at some results from this key. Now, the important part is to see what random is this. So we'll highlight that. that's the lowercase random. That was my mistake. I chose the uppercase one. So we'll see that's importing crypto.random. So that tells us that it's using a cryptographic random number generator. Uh, if we wanted, we can actually look at the source of crypt, crypto random, uh, you probably have to find the correct RCG here. So we could look at this if we wanted to. We'll see it by default has a strong random, and it likely calls some uh, some functions from the system that makes it strong. So um, already from experience, I know that this is not something we can brute force unfortunately so it is generating a secure key however we do see that it's then writing it to a key.txt so we might be on the lookout for that file so that's interesting um, looks like for processing a file we go down here decrypt how to decrypt okay so there is, we do need to still see what's the structure of an encrypted file. So processing file. All right, so we read in block sizes. And we're gonna, we're gonna pad the block. We're gonna create an IV for every file. And once again, we're using random.new. Now I think this, it doesn't really matter whether this is a cryptographically strong IV um, in this case. Um, so IV doesn't have to be cryptographically strong. Um, it just has to be, for good security, different for each file. So it looks like we're using CBC mode. We're using AES, passing in a new IV for each file. And we're actually saving that IV as the first bytes of the file and then the encrypted part. So cipher, cipher encrypt, which is AES. So, our, so that's our structure of our file. The first, um, with AES, it has to be 16 bytes is the block size. Um, so the first 16 bytes of the file is going to be the IV. And then the rest of it's the encrypted file with our custom padding. Or in this case, PC KCS7. So we can also take a little further look down here. We say there's a generation of an RSA key. And they use that for encrypting that AES key. So that would likely be like what would be put in a ransom note or something in, in real practice. So we kind of have an idea of how this ransomware works. And you could dig even more into if you want to read, like I said, if you want to read how the random works, how this uses AES and such. So I do have, um, because this ransomware was way too slow to do on video, <laughs> um, I have an, a previous execution of it. And it did drop that key.txt. We'll take a look at that. Uh, this is a, the key that it generated in that instance. So let's just, uh, let's just double check we can decrypt this correctly. So in this case, the base one that I had did use the extension .rsrs. So we'll see this is one of my bait files that was nothing but zero bytes. And it's encrypted to this. So let's grab, let's grab our key. Paste it in there. Now they do treat it as text, not hex. So it is AES 256 in this case, not, not AES 128. We'll select AES. And then, like I said, our structure is these first 16 bytes are the IV, and then the rest of it's the encrypted file. So we need to grab these 16 bytes to use as the IV and then skip them when we go to actually decrypt. So I made a button that does that goes offset 16 and we're using CBC we're using PKCS 7 sorry I might have said PCKS before and decrypt and there's our zero bytes so that confirms that we're using that encryption algorithm so 
let's see. Yeah, now it finally finished decompiling. So that has been a quick analysis of a Python-based ransomware. Um, there are some extra steps with some more advanced ones where you may need to correct the magic header. Sometimes it might be a different version of Python. Um, some, the, if you get like an error with the PyInstractor or the PyDecrypt, um, you can easily Google the error. And there's uh, some, like I said, you, sometimes you have to mess with the, the magic header. I'll link an article on that one. Um, otherwise, usually they're pretty simple to reverse other than, like I said, finding the initial execution script and digging through a million libraries. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or if you have a suggestion on finding that entry point easier. Um, so until next time, thank you for watching.